Hi everyone, hello. Welcome to a comedy show featuring music. I'm Mike Engel. Hi! Hi! Give it up for yourselves for coming out to this show and supporting Planned Parenthood. Yeah! Someone has to. God. Let's not get depressed though. Let's talk about how in 2017, you know, I think we all can agree that everything is wrong with the KKK, but especially those silly hats. Get them off those hands, replace them with 18 inch pizzas, you will be the hit at the clan meeting. Everybody eating off your pizza hat, you can call it a pizza sombrero. And I think that would really solve all the problems that Italy and Mexico have with each other. You all are correct to laugh. There is such a thing as the Atlantic Ocean. Why would Italy have beef with Mexico? That's not a soccer or football reference. If you're European, that is a Street Fighter 2 stage select screen reference. And we've come a long way since 1991, I'll tell you. We've come a long way. Look where we are now. In 2017, I'm going to judge you if you say, I hate, insert race here. Also going to judge you if you say sardines are your favorite pizza toppings, like, doy, you know? Sardines are just disguised in salt. They have eyes. Get them off my za. Get them out of my country. I think Trump should build a tiny three-foot wall that sardines cannot breach and that Mexicans and Muslims can just step over casually, like this. And back to the Street Fighter thing, you know, Trump, he does look like M. Bison. Just as orange, just as evil. Shadalu. And M. Bison, Russian. Coincidence? I think not. Um, you know, I came up with a depression test. You know, you're automatically depressed when you just step into the shower and then, like, immediately curl up into a ball. And then just let the water hit you from anywhere from 15 to 69 minutes. And I know what you're thinking. 69 minutes, Mike, that's an hour and nine minutes. I know, but I did the math on the joke. And 69 is just funnier to say. But eventually I'm like, fuck! I gotta get on with my shower activities. You know, I've got three roommates and they've gotta use the shower for their own depression. So, gotta keep things moving. There's a group that I hate just as equally as the KKK and it's the International Flat Earth Society. You know, it's like, they're just general science deniers. All of, all of the things, all the things such as the earth is flat, global warming isn't real, the sun is a myth, you know, these things. And so, where does it stop with these people? What do these people think are just flat across the board? They think boobs, just equivocally, are flat? There's billions of boobs. You're going to get some flat ones. There is one Earth, and we can all agree that it is round, or at least spheroidal. And so, you know, these people, they love cartographers, the map makers of the world. Keep churning out those maps. We want more of them. Globe makers hate them, even though it's a trade lost to time. They hate artisans, the flat earthers. They really hate 3D movies. They hate 3D movies. They'll go into a 3D movie with their 3D glasses, take them off, and be like, I knew it. I knew it the whole time. This thing's flat. I'm smart. When I go to the movies, I put my 3D glasses over my regular glasses. Two sets of glasses, twice as smart. <laughs> all right, guys. You guys are all nice and warmed up. Are you guys ready for a comedy show or what? Yeah! This first lady coming to the stage, she's amazing. Uh, she came all the way from the 757. She is hilarious. It is. Liz Barlow, everybody. Hell yeah! Um, even if you can't see me, I'm pretty, so keep clapping. Woo! 
I think the International Flat Society is hilarious. There's a famous rapper, his name is B.O.B. He believes that the world is flat. And in my theory, it's like, don't you think that white people would have gathered all the niggas up by now and tossed us off the edge of the earth if they could? Like, they really would have just put us on buses. Come on, let's go. And push us off the edge of the earth. Or at least black mamas would have threatened it. You know what I mean? Like, I will take you to the edge of the earth. Keep acting up. Everybody happy that the holidays are over? Yes? Yes, it's fine. I love the holidays, but... I realize that white people and black people have different rules for the holidays, right? Black people's, our rules is not everybody can't make everything, right? Like, my, I have an aunt that's such a terrible cook that we don't let her bring store-bought food. <laughs> my mom told her to bring cups for Thanksgiving. Like, I said, tell her don't forget the ice. I don't know what to tell her. Yeah, sir, thank you. In the middle of my set, thank you so much. I don't want your interruptions, thank you. Um, white people, your rule is don't talk about politics at the table. Black people don't have that rule because we all agree on the same shit, you know what I mean? Like it's not, girl, yeah, he won. Come on in here and get you some yams, come on, come on. So here we are, guys, it's inauguration day. And um, I don't know about you, but I've been planning since November for this day to come. I went straight to USA Jobs, and I applied to be Mammy Technician number one in the house. Um, I thought about being Phil Hand number three, but my vocals aren't good enough to sing Swing Low, Sweet Chariot for eight hours. So I was like, let me go for what I know. Let me do this for one for eight hours. Um, I don't know guys, I think that we're maybe putting a little too much on it, like he's winging it, so let's wing it, let's go for, let's just figure it out as we go along. This man picked his cabinet by going through his call log, like, <laughs> like let's be honest, he hit up Belle Biv DeVoe, because that's what I call her, um, Belle Biv DeVoe, and he was like, hey girl, you want to come help me run the country and chill? <laughs> emoji, 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 like that was it. That's how he picked her. Did you guys watch the Senate hearing with them asking her questions? How terribly dumb is she? Oh my God. This woman couldn't confidently say that she didn't want guns in schools because there may be grizzly bears in some cities. I said, that's like me negotiating sexual consent, right? It's like, I can't confidently say right now that I don't want your dick inside of me, okay? What I know is, I thank you for arranging this meeting in your apartment. Um, thank you for this drink, it made me a little woozy, okay? Um, but I look forward to having your dick inside of me, and if it goes well, I look forward to reporting you, okay? <laughs> That is not a great way to start off a relationship or a country, okay? That's terrible. I don't know. I told my mom that I'm pretty sure that we've had the blackest president in Barack Obama, but Donald Trump is the most nigga president we've ever had. He's the most nigga president we've ever had. Just think about it, listen. He says ignorant shit all the time, it doesn't make any sense. But he says it with bravado, right? He has a bunch of baby mamas, and he doesn't pay his taxes. If he were darker and had a crack habit, I'd say it was my cousin Jeff. Like, I would swear, I would swear on it. It's like, that's, he looks so familiar. Oh my God. I am, um, everybody wants somebody to blame, right? It's like this group, that group, this group. And I am proud of white men. You did a bang up job. Um, you went in there and voted exactly how I thought you would, so good for you, okay? Um, black men, eh, the same. It's like 25% of black men voted for Trump, and I'm like, you like white women anyway, so it's fine. You're not looking for me, okay? Black women did exactly what we're supposed to do. We were basically brandy in this horror, this election cycle horror movie of I know how you voted for the last eight years. So, trying to save the world. My problem is with white women. Um, what the fuck? What happened? What happened here, guys? 
he promised, what is he promising you? To keep you in the kitchen and grab you by the pussy. That's it. That's all he's giving you. Speaking of grabbing by the pussy, um, did we ever figure out how one gets grabbed by the pussy? Did we figure it out? Is it, is it by hook or by crook? Like, how are we... How is one getting grabbed by the, is it a two? Is it an automatic two? Is it a two, three? Is it like bowling? Like how are you getting grabbed? Or do you just put one in and flip her over like a Dairy Queen cup and you hope the spoon doesn't fall out? You know what I mean? What do you mean? I, the one, the first time I heard it, I was like, why would you grab, that's such a weird way to sexually assault somebody, right? Why not grab titties? Go for what you know, right? Because if you run up on me, you grab titties, you run away, I'm screaming, you're screaming, it's fine, okay? This is America. I don't have a thigh gap. If you run up on me and grab pussy, you're going to be grabbing a lot more than pussy. You might be back there so long, we're going to get in a relationship, you know what I mean? How did you meet your boyfriend? Well, it was Wednesday, he was grabbing pussy. And Say, hey, you cute. And now we here. I love YouTube love story. It's ridiculous. Um, make some noise for me. I just got in a relationship this week. Yay. And I broke up with him this week. Yay. He, um, he just wasn't the right guy. It was several reasons we broke up. One, his house was dirty. Right? And I don't mean like junky. I mean like generations of dust bunnies were having a family reunion in his house. It was that dirty. Um, we didn't really go on dates. Like he wanted to take me to Applebee's and I don't have two for 20 pussy so and the third one was he just didn't last long enough. Look I'm not requiring a whole much. Like I'm not, I know you're laughing ma'am, but I require about 37.5 minutes worth of sex, okay? I have measured it down. I'm not rat pussy. Rat pussy is where you can have sex all day and all night and people are doing ecstasy and there's just like the Migos are in the background playing bad and bougie and the shit is amazing, but I don't have that kind of pussy, okay? After about 37.5 minutes, my shit dry up and what you got is about a dry turkey sandwich. That's all I got. He was only lasting about eight minutes. Here's how I know. I had enough time to run through a set of comedy and do crowd work. Like that's, I had time to ask questions. You see what I mean? Yeah, so I mean, um, I'm looking for a boyfriend. I also have a type. Anybody in here have a type? You guys look like a fluid love crowd, so that's not really a question for you. I have a type. My type is about 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, 315 pounds, specifically. Like somewhere in between like a lumberjack, a shot put thrower, and a slave. Like right on that scale. And after today, I might find one. I'm just saying. When they put us back in the field, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Most of the guys that apply for that job, though, are fat boys. I don't like fat boys, okay? And I feel like people look at me and are like, but Liz, mm, mind your fucking business, okay? Don't, don't worry about it. I don't like fat guys because... Have you ever tried to cuddle and somebody's sleep at me and machine was in the way? You know what I mean? Like he's trying to talk to you and he sounds like Darth Vader. It's just weird as fuck. And I'm not interested, okay? Fat boys, when they sweat, they smell like hot dog water and high blood pressure. And it's just not the sexiest scent in the world, okay? I'm working on it. I'm working on trying not to be so shallow. Um, I also consider myself, and I know you guys can't tell by looking at me, I am a fuckboy. Um, a supreme one. It's actually, I am, it's a goal in life to be the highest form of fuckery that I can. Okay. Um, I, here's how I found out I was a fuckboy. I was dating this guy, and he was nice enough. He had his own car, you know. I didn't have to pick him up from his mom's house. We were doing good, okay? And he asked me on a date for Friday. 
We're all excited. We get to Friday and good dick texts me. Now, I don't know if you know or not, sir, but if good dick texts you, you have to go, okay? This man goes to good dick, I promise you, okay? <laughs> So I go to Good Dick's house, we do what grown-ups do. I fall asleep because it's what happens with no bonnet on because he protects my hair and he respects it or his girlfriend's hair. Doesn't really matter, okay? I wake up to two missed calls and a text message that says, oh really, I forgot to tell the first guy that I wasn't coming, right? So I get up and I go get my whole bag. Now everybody has a whole bag. My whole bag happens to be an old Dora the Explorer book bag, right? <laughs> My little cousin didn't need it anymore, ma'am, okay? <laughs> so I go and I get a pizza from 7-Eleven. Not for me, because after you finish getting dicked down, eating a whole bunch of cheese ain't good for your system, all right? So I knock on the door and I say, I'm sorry. My phone fell behind the bed, which is technically true, just not my bed, right? So we're talking and we're chatting. He's telling me shit I don't care about, like his job and about how somebody feels about like they're better than him because they make more money. And I'm like, duh, he is better than you. And we fall asleep and he looks me in my eyes and he says, Liz, I'm the only one, right? Ooh. That's a difficult question to answer because I could give him the Elizabeth answer, which is a good Christian answer. Or I could say, what would Liz Barlow do? Um, which is pull out the best Hamlet quote that I can find. Also, if you don't know, Hamlet is a classical fuckboy. He's uh, what we aspire to be. He's right in between Simba up there with fuckery, okay? <laughs> Let's be honest, like, Simba's a fuckboy, okay? <laughs> Dad, get up. You know he dead, go on. <laughs> <laughs> and I look him in his eyes and I say, baby, even the number one got three letters and I fucked him because I didn't want him thinking about that, okay? Guys, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what I know is I'd rather have a bacterial infection than tell the truth, okay? My name is Liz Barlow. Thank you so much for your time, Richmond. One more time for Liz Barlow, everybody. Fuck yeah! That was awesome. Okay, so, this next lady, she's great. She hit me up on Facebook and was like, I want to sign up for the open mic. And I was like, oh shit, there's no open mic this month. Want to be on the show? And she's like, yay! And that's awesome, because she's got one of my favorite jokes in all of the Richmond scene. You guys can guess when she does it, and I'll quiz you all when I get back. But until then, everybody, Charlotte Jones, get up! Seat, so if you're standing around and you're tired of people pushing you out of the way, just sit down here and suffer through this. Um, thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Liz. You guys are great. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, first off, I need a volunteer um, for a, a, just an audience participation style joke. Anyone? Knock, knock. Who's there? My vagina. My bitch, I'm so lonely. <laughs> Speaking of vaginas, I'm just kidding. I don't need a segue because this entire set is about vaginas and this entire night is about vaginas. Um, yeah! I wasn't expecting that response. Um, uh, have any of you ever gone to the gynecologist and then had the pleasure of waiting on them at a restaurant a couple months later? <laughs> I was waiting tables once and uh, my doctor and her husband came in and they sat in my section and all I could think uh, while I was taking their order was, you ma'am had your fingers in my pussy this past January. You know all of my secrets and we're the only two people in this restaurant that know that. But I didn't say that, I just asked them if they needed any Chipotle ranch for their sweet potato fries. Um, if I were to try and make a euphemism out of that, um, there would be no dicks involved. It would just be my gynecologist's lovely fingers, represented, of course, by the sweet potato fries, gingerly dipped into 
the Chipotle Ranch sauce, known also as my vagina. Um, needless to say, I've been thinking about making some changes in my life so that I don't have to talk about my private parts in front of strangers to boost my self-esteem. Um, I just moved into a smaller apartment, um, so I've been downsizing a lot and decluttering and that whole thing. So for starters, I switched out my full-size bed for a twin bed, and I like to think that it makes more room for my ambition. <laughs> because if there's anything I want more in life than a partner, it's success in my career. I work as a cashier in a deli downtown, uh, and from time to time, I will see random pairs of businessmen meeting up there that aren't really acquainted, but they're getting together to talk about business. Um, and I know that that's what they're there for, but I like to pretend that they're on a Tinder date. <laughs> Ted Robinson? Chris Bennett, great to meet you. Come on, sit down, have some coffee. So, Chris, is the NASDAQ rising, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> uh, I don't define myself by my job. Um, I have a lot of hobbies that I find fulfilling. Um, at the moment, I'm working on a prototype for an invention. It's kind of like a book, book light, but not really. It's just um, a headset that holds your smartphone in front of your face while you're masturbating, so you can use both hands while you're watching porn. Because sometimes you really need to get in there. I don't have a patent yet, so in the meantime, I'm just using a selfie stick on the pillow. been laid in a very long time, um, but I still think about it a lot, not so much fantasizing, just trying to remember what it was ever like. Uh, but nothing sticks out, so that's just reminding me that I've had a lot of shitty, boring sex my whole life. Um, and I could be complicit in that, I understand, but the last time I was in bed with the guy, uh, it was so unmoving that in the middle of all of it, I pulled out my phone and I started playing Candy Crush. <laughs> but that was before I even got into podcasts, so now I would probably just pop in my earbuds and say, go to town, I've got several episodes to get through. I gotta catch up on my shows. Multitasking is a very American um, pastime, I think. You can do a lot of things at the same time. And, uh, for instance, you can go to Taco Bell so that you can drive and eat. Um, you can text and drive, you can text and eat, you can eat and masturbate, you can masturbate and drive, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you can even masturbate and text someone to drive to your house and bring you Taco Bell. So, it, anything is possible. Um, I think if there's any silver lining to my forced celibacy, I would say that um, I'm at the age where I finally aged out of giving blowjobs. I don't do it anymore because I've got nothing to prove, and I don't really enjoy it anymore. I think I used to, but those days are over. Um, blowjobs are more of an activity for those among, of us, among us who would be considered spring chickens, whereas I like to think of myself as a bowling alley chicken strip. Um, the older I get, I get better at uh, dealing with rejection. The last time, I one time had a crush on a guy and uh, I didn't really know how to broach the subject until we were at the convenience store and uh, I was getting some sodas and you know how those Coke cans have the words along the side. Um, I picked out one for him that said soulmate and I uh, handed it to him. And then he handed me a can of Coke too, but the one he handed me just said, buddy. <laughs> At work the other day, a coworker of mine told me that I had, um, that my flaps were really neat. And I would tell you the context of that, but I think it's a little sexier if I don't. <laughs> Not to mention, I, the flaps that I've got in mind are, um, Distinctly not neat, you know? It's kind of like when saran wrap gets all jumbled up. It's never going to lay flat again. But I'm okay with that. Um, can I get a show of hands? Uh, has anyone in this room ever tried to clean their own clitoris? 
this guy. Um, it's the most frustrating thing in the whole world. You ever tried to grasp that little silver ball that's at the end of a gerbil's water bottle? All right, if you're a guy, um, the closest comparison I can make is trying to suck your own dick. Um, if you're a gay man and you've never tried to suck your own dick, um, I'll put it in the words of the Reverend Mother at Nonberg Abbey and say, how do you keep a wave upon the sand? Um, okay, speaking of sand, uh, what's the difference between menstrual blood and sand? What? I've never made love rolling around in sand, you guys. <laughs> Thanks. You've been great. Yeah. Yeah. Charlotte, everybody. Hell yeah. Yeah. yeah! I was in a mode of panic. Did, did she do IRLcuties.com? No. Damn it! <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Catch her around town, she'll do it again. IRLcuties.com, hilarious. I mean, that premise alone, what are you gonna do? Alrighty, folks. So, this next lady, she's amazing. She draws many, many cats on many, many napkins all over the place. Used to be Bandito's mojo? Mojo's now. You can catch her drawing all the cats, and she's fucking hilarious. Everybody, give it up for Alyssa Argenzio, everybody. Yeah! Hey guys, how's it going? Everybody drinking? Everybody tipping? Your bartenders are treating you right. You better treat them right back. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm really excited all y'all came out tonight because it means to me that you think it's important to listen to women. Yeah. And you're fucking right. Here's why. I have been overhearing the coolest shit in bars this week. I heard this one drunk girl talk about how her dad makes out with his friends at his kids' birthday parties and has since she was a little girl. Whoa, man. I heard another girl talk about how she took LSD and filled her bathtub with frozen cocktail shrimp, poured hot water in it, and got in the tub with them. Damn, girl. <laughs> My favorite thing I've ever heard this week is about a girl whose pussy evidently is a little bit acidic and not only bleaches little stains in the shape of her pussy and her underwear like a stamp, but keeps her asshole clean at the same time. Is that pussy science? It might be pussy magic. <laughs> I got this theory about pussy magic. Half of my friends seem to think that they're fucking witches. I don't know, y'all know about that? Like women 25 to 35, everybody seems to think they're a fucking witch these days. My roommate's always making these tinctures. I'm like, is that a potion? Is it liquor? Are we gonna poison somebody? Like, what's going on, man? She's got a ton of fucking crystals. Y'all got any crystal girlfriends? You know what I'm talking about? Like, we could be and hexes and like, lining up everybody's chakras or unlining the chakras of our enemies. I'm pretty sure she's just summoning pumpkin spice lattes. Like, come on, man. Let's get into some evil shit. Let's get into some sorcery. And I'm weird, you know? Like, I like to take shots out of an alligator head, make my friends do it. Maybe sometimes I encourage people to take gravy shooters, which are horrible. You ever had a gravy shooter? I think I invented it. It's half whiskey, and it's half gravy, and it's not good. But just because I can get people to take them doesn't make me some kind of bad-ass warlock. I think it makes me a redneck. I'm embracing it. I'm, I'm coping with the fact that I think secretly I might have been switched at birth with a baby from Florida. <laughs> I've been practicing my southern dialect. I've always been into um, just the bizarre regional things that people say. I like when people are folks. And I like when folks reckon that they're fixing to do something. Especially if they're fixing to give them what for. 
traveled a lot this past summer, and on my trip, I started collecting Southern colloquialisms. It's okay, guys, go on. It's fun. Enjoy that cigarette. Bye, I miss you already. I was in Memphis, I had an Uber driver tell me that on the interstate, his car could run like a scalded dog. What? That's crazy. What kind of dog? Like a Greyhound? That's fucking fast as shit. That's why they got buses named after him. I've been working on my own Southern colloquialisms and um, interspersing them into conversation to see if anybody calls me out. If a band I really like is playing, I refer to them as playing them tunes, but really get the frogs a-jumping. Mmm. Damn. If someone's causing me trouble, or someone's telling me a story about something that's causing them trouble, I'll say, Man, that really ties your snakes in a knot, huh? Someone once asked about that, they were like, ties your snakes in a knot? What the fuck does that mean, Alyssa? And the only example I could come up with was, you know when you're out on the bayou and your airboat's going and your frog gigging and the gators storm up and then suddenly the fan on your airboat breaks? That'll tie your snakes in a knot. God damn. Speaking of redneck things, have y'all ever heard of worm fiddling? It's also known as worm charming, or in Florida we call it worm grunting. But uh, it's the act of getting worms to come up out of the ground, and traditionally it's used to supply worms to fishers, but now they have whole competitions about it. In England, where they call it worm charming, the world record is held by a 10-year-old girl who grunted up 567 worms in 10 minutes. It's three-person teams. You've got your worm caller, your worm counter, and your worm collector. But 567 worms out of the earth in 10 minutes? If that's not witchcraft, I don't know what the fuck is. Straight up. Um, witchcraft, dude. Y'all are all witches, and I know it. That famous whale died, and nobody told me. In SeaWorld, in Florida, you know. Tillicum, he's the one that made Blackfish about. Do you know how many times I watched Blackfish? I was like 12 when I first found out about that whale, and he got me interested in serial killers, and obviously it's all been rainbows and butterflies since then. <laughs> but that famous whale died, and nobody thought I would want to know. I had to find out on my own. Um, winding it down. <laughs> you ever wonder what it would be like if you had turned out to be a juggalo? <laughs> like, who would I be in the mornings as I applied, like, hatchet man eyeliner to each of my eyes? I made sure that my stitches look right before I go to the Riff Raff concert and snorted bath salts before work at JCPenney's. It could be a totally different thing. I feel like we're living in an alternate dimension anyways with everything that's going on politically. And I figure we might as well embrace it. And just like, everybody's witches anyways. Let's live like Harry Potter. I'm Slytherin, I'm sorry. It's just gonna have to be that way. But like, let's start playing Quidditch. Let's learn how to cast positive spells that are good for women's health, as opposed to the other way around. Um, Last two things. Uh, I've been trying to figure out how I can get a stranger to shave my legs for me. <laughs> and pay for the privilege to do it. <laughs> but Craigslist seems really unsafe. Like, I don't want to go to somebody else's house and hand them a razor or let them use their own. And I don't want anyone to come to my house with a razor or my own and just feel comfortable knowing where I live and shaving my legs in the bathtub, but that's somebody's fetish and there's gotta be someone that would pay me hundreds of dollars to do the work that I'm too lazy to do. And I could just talk shit to him the whole time and spit on him and he'd love it, you know? Like, fucking hurry up. Someone's coming over to do my laundry in half an hour. All right? And then the guy with my groceries is showing up after that and the guy to wash my dishes is showing up after that, so you can't be taken all day and why the fuck do you have an erection? It's not cool, man. Um, I want to leave you guys with a question. It's a really important question to me. Um, is there anyone out 
out there that doesn't like to get called daddy? Thanks for coming out. Have a good night. Oh, yeah. One more time for Alyssa. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm too short to be a daddy, so, you know. I'm a, I'll always be a little boy. Little angle. Just a little angle. Are you guys ready for your headliner? Headliner. Headliner.